What's going on guys, Captain Orange 23 here and today we're going to learn how to start up and use the autopilot in the Cessna Citation Jet in the brand new Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Before we begin guys, if you would like to see more Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 content, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when I upload a new video. Also, don't forget that I do have a Discord server where you can find other people to fly with in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. The link is in the description. Let's get right, right into this so video. So here we are in the cockpit of the Cessna Citation Jet. And it's actually really simple. You'll notice we have no overhead panel and there isn't too many buttons. I mean, a lot of these are in op as you see here. And um, they're, they're just not, it's not that complicated. Honestly, when I first got in this jet, I was kind of surprised of how simple it was. So um, let's go ahead and get our engine started up. We'll just run through the checklist here. It's pretty simple. Uh, we would just want to make sure the parking brake set, our power is idle. Generator switches, we can switch to on, which they are on already. Battery switch goes on just like that. And avionics master goes to dispatch. All right, and starting the engine is very simple. It's kind of similar to an Airbus, but not really. Um, all you got to do is hit this starter there, and then we're going to <clears throat> run when it's at N2 up here um, on our ND over here, our multifunction display. Our ND is rising, and when it hits 20%, we're going to engage this, or we're going to start the right engine. So there is 20%. All we got to do is lift this flap here, or the little guard, and then run. And then we can close that flap again. All right, and then we're going to monitor both our ITT and our N1. And make sure everything is running as it should. All right, our N1 is climbing. And at that point, we can repeat the same procedure with the left side engine. We'll turn the starter on just like that and monitor N2 until it hits 20%. and should be at 20 now. Lift the guard and run it. All right, and while that engine is starting up, um, let's go over some of the autopilot functions. Now, it's kind of similar to a G1000 but it's not a G1000 and um, I guess it's more similar to a airliner because all your autopilot is going to be right here in this middle panel and we've seen this before a lot of this before in the Airbus A320 now starting from the left this is of course your flight director that's in pretty much every single aircraft that has a glass cockpit this sets your course this knob down here this right here is your vertical speed and your vertical navigation mode if you have something plugged into the FMC down here. All right, and this is how you decrease and increase your vertical speed. Pretty simple stuff. This is flight level change. Now, that one important thing is this jet actually does not have a auto throttle on it. Now, the uh, the Cessna Longitude, it does have an auto throttle, but this jet does not have an auto throttle. So, you got to manage your speed yourself or you can have it manage it with flight level change but that's only if you're ascending or descending and this is you can increase or decrease the selected airspeed the next button is navigation mode and this is again if you have a flight plan plugged into your FMC you can turn half bank mode off or on and all this does is it makes it where the aircraft pretty much will only bank at half the distance it usually does mainly for comfort of your passengers this of course is your heading hold and this is how you adjust the heading hold this is your approach mode which is used for ILS landings this is your back course mode which is what I mentioned in the Cessna G1000 ILS landing and it allows you to fly a localizer backwards away from the runway if you have to go around this is your altitude hold mode and it that's it's just going to hold you at whatever altitude and you'll need to use flight level change or vertical speed in order to reach those but we will see that later this is yaw damper all a yaw damper does is pretty much reduce the amount of movement in the air it kind of counteracts the movement so again it's comfort for your passengers you usually always want to have this on 
And of course we have our autopilot and our flight director on the other side. And this is our autopilot disconnect. So that is pr the basics of the autopilot. Um, let's go ahead and run through our after engine starting. It's pretty simple. All we can do is turn our avionics on, get our lights on, and release the parking brake when we are ready for taxi. But with that being said, let's go ahead and taxi to the runway. And I will get to you. Alright, we're now then. sitting at the hold short line of the runway, and all we want to do now is lower our flaps down to the middle select section. There's only two selections of flaps we have, just like kind of like a Cessna. So you want it on that middle selection there. Alright, and next what you want to do is go ahead and increase your altitude, and that's going to be this knob right here. And we'll notice it's going to increase by this aqua, these aqua numbers above our altimeter right here. So if I spin this knob, it's going up. We're just going to set it to, let's say, 10,000 feet for now. I hate it when it does that. There we go. There's 10,000 feet. All right, and that's really all we have to do. Typically, I would set a um, speed, but... Um, uh, like I said, this doesn't have a speed hold on it. So let's go ahead and get in the air and check out this autopilot of this aircraft. Alright, and we are lined up pretty well. Let's go 40%, make sure they're stable. And we can go. Alright, and we are already at V1. You can just see how quickly this jet can take off. Very fast. Alright, and with that we can get the gear up. Just like that. And I'm actually going to lower my throttle a little bit. Because this jet does climb extremely quickly. Quickly. Quickly, that's funny. Alright, I'm going to trim this out. Alright, and after we take off, I'm going to go ahead and engage the autopilot with this button over here. And we have autopilot on, but um, just like the G1000, we can see up here, autopilot's on, but we still have roll and pitch. Now, in order to get pitch to say altitude, all we got to do is engage altitude hold, just like that. And now it's going to level off at um, what looks like 2,000 feet, or 3,000 feet. 2,200. Alright, now in order to raise this, what we can do is increase our altitude again up to, let's just say, 10,000 feet. Alright, and we can engage flight level change. And now what it's doing is it's going to try to maintain our aircraft at 273 knots while also trying to ascend to 10,000 feet. All right, we're getting that ITT warning, and that's just the engines running a little hot there. Um, another thing is on the on the throttle. We'll notice it's something similar to an Airbus. We have this these three lines. This is cruise, climb, and takeoff thrust. And when you're climbing, you obviously want to try to guess where it's at that line. You don't want full throttle when you're climbing. You want to try to get it on this climbing line. So it's going to be somewhere around like 70%, maybe 65 down there. But with flight level change on, you do want to make sure you do have some thrust in in order to ascend and maintain that speed. And I'm actually going to decrease the airspeed with this knob here just like that. Alright, another thing we can do is turn on our flight director just like that and all that is is this little purple arrow and it's going to show where the aircraft is trying to go. And we can go ahead and raise our flaps. And there's a huge stutter. Alright, another function of the autopilot that I'm going to show is this vertical speed. Now with this engaged we'll notice that this flight level change has now changed to VS0 and that's because it it's trying to it's going to level us off essentially 
because we're, we're going to climb at zero feet per minute so that makes no sense so with vertical speed engaged if we wanted to actually climb we need to scroll this wheel downward because we see it says up and down so if we scroll scroll it down what we'll see this arrow right here this aqua arrow is climbing and it, it's going to try to ascend us at 900 feet per minute <clears throat> now if i keep scrolling it down that arrow is going to continue to move and it shows up here if we wanted to ascend at 2000 feet per minute then so be it or 2500 now the same way works descending if you want to reduce this value just simply scroll it up and that arrow moves back down and we can descend but I am going to ascend at 2000 feet per minute up to 10,000 feet now another thing is heading hold and that's going to be located right here if we turn on heading hold then it's going to start banking us to a heading of zero now we can change this by scrolling this knob and we will notice just like the G1000 we have this little aqua thing right here that it's going to try and match and we can also see it right here heading 25 and if I keep scrolling that we also have this line right here then that is where your aircraft is going to try and point so now it's over to our right and the aircraft is going to bank to the right just like that we're now leveled off at pretty much 10,000 feet it's a little bit below but that's fine and you'll notice my speed is pretty much holding where I want it and now this is because I have reduced throttle down to this cruise line which is about 55 percent or a little less you just want to make sure you don't go into this red line or that will be an overspeed alright now let's say we wanted to descend well how do we do that it's pretty simple all we have to do is decrease our altitude say we want to go down to 6,000 feet just like that now we have two choices we can either engage vertical speed or flight level change again if we engage flight level change and lower our throttle then it is going to nose down because it's going to try to maintain 301 knots as shown right here and a quick way to descend quickly is flight level change because if you lower your throttle all the way well you see we're pointing right towards the ground <clears throat> and you gotta be careful with flight level change it is a little buggy right now and not too precise so you gotta kinda find that sweet spot that's why I really like to use vertical speed now if we engage vertical speed instead and scroll this wheel up then we'll see this arrow is going to move down and we can descend as quickly as we want we could descend at 2500 feet per minute or we could descend at 5000 feet per minute it just whatever you want so I'm going to descend down to 2500 feet alright and now um, these this course button right here is mainly used for ILS approaches instrument approaches to a runway um, this half bank we can actually turn this half bank mode off and you'll see what it does if I turn my heading to the right well now it's going to bank further than it really would with half bank mode on okay well there now apparently it's okay so I see when it's on it it'll bank at a steeper angle but with it off it will cut that value in half and bank smoother for your passengers back here to enjoy their ride or you know be more comfortable alright and we can turn the yaw damper on as well or not I guess that just doesn't even work so that's always good to know alright and it looks like we've already reached our altitude so that is how you descend and like I said we have no auto throttle so you're gonna have to manage it yourself and just keep an eye on it alright um, I think that will do it for this video everybody um, a later video I'll show you how to bring this aircraft in for an ILS approach and how to work this FMC down here and it's pretty simple it's similar to a I mean both Boeing and Airbus you know all the FMC's are going to look pretty similar so in a later video we'll go over how to use that and how to ILS land this aircraft 
So that'll do it for this video, guys. Um, if you're new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe. Always looking for new subscribers, of course. Uh, don't forget to join the Discord, and I will see you guys in the next Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 video.